thank you for that. Just wanted to get the uh, energy up. Uh, what did everyone think of uh, Attorney General Eric Schneiderman? So I hope to be the first of many speakers that you have that ask you to take your cell phones out, so hold them up in the air. And uh, if you haven't seen, we're on Twitter. So we'd love you to tweet what's going on. So when something is a Democratic lawyer's point, we're at NYDLC. My name's at Kalos, and we have events BYNY, NYC for Action, and OFA underscore NY. So uh, we'll leave that out a little bit. So we're going to start the program with a short history of voting rights. So does anyone know about where voting rights were in 1775? So the king could vote, it was King George, and we already had a King George recently in our lifetimes, but so King George was the only one who could vote, and what happened a year later after 1775? The American Revolution. So we have the American Revolution. It's, seven, it's 1783. So who can vote in 1783? Okay, so if you're a white male property holder, please stand up. So we have no white male property owners standing. I should be sitting, so let's move to the uh, next chance we get for uh, voting rights. So it's 1870. Who gets the right to vote? So it's the 15th Amendment, and who got the right to vote with the 15th Amendment? So it is, uh, you are protected regardless of race or previous condition of servitude. So could all the uh, folks who are uh, white and non-white please stand up? So I think everyone in the room should be standing. Okay, so anyone who isn't a woman, please stand up. Because you got the right to vote, it's 1870. Just stay standing. Opinion, you get to vote. This is a very small percentage of uh, women in the room. Do you agree with all the things these guys have to say? Okay, so we're now going to fast forward. And uh, ac actually, so this is the 15th Amendment, and uh, we have the 15th Amendment, and it's supposed to protect uh, the right of minorities to vote. Uh, did it? No. Okay, so if you're a minority, please sit back down. You did not get the right to vote. We were just kidding. 1920, who got the right to vote? What event? So all the women in the room, please, please stand up. Uh, and again, if you're a minority, I'm going to ask you to please stay sitting, because in spite of the 15th Amendment, you still really don't get the right to vote. So uh, how long did women fight to get the right to vote? Does anyone know that? 1848, Seneca Falls, 72 years. So now uh, we're going to fast forward. Uh, does anyone know what year I'm going to fast forward to? 1964. So civil rights and voting rights, 1964, 1965. So now everyone gets to stand up in the room, please. Wait, wait, not yet, not yet. Is anyone in the room under 21? If you're under 21, I see somebody raise their hand. Please sit back down. Okay, why is that? You have to be 21 to vote. So now it's 1971, and uh, what's going on in the country in 1971? Some of you were alive. And so what did we ask for as an amendment across the country? And so in our lifetime, we have amended our Constitution to protect the right to vote to enfranchise people. So we did that in 18 year olds. So there's uh, somebody under the age of 21. Please stand up and, and join us. <laughs> so now I have an important question. So we're going to fast forward to today. If you don't have a New York State issued driver's license or a state issued driver's license, I'd like you to sit back down, please. So that's not as much of a chunk as usual. What I'm used to seeing is usually most of the room sitting down because we live in an urban area. Most of us ride mass transit. So uh, thank you for humoring me. I hope you guys got some exercise out of it.
Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. Uh, that, that's a quote from Wendell Phillips. And voter ID is the challenge of our generation. Uh, so that's a little bit about what's at stake. Uh, now, does anyone know about any of the voter ID cases that came out? Was anyone in Pennsylvania this? Uh, so, uh, what happened in Pennsylvania? They had a voter ID law, right? Yeah. Okay, so you guys know more than most audiences do, because most audiences tell me Pennsylvania's fine. It got struck down, and the truth is, it's been postponed. So, by 2014, we're looking at the voter IDs being very tough, in Pennsylvania. So, as we're sitting here, uh, do I need a driver's license to vote in New York State? No. What do I need to vote in New York State? No. So, it's a signature identification, you show up. Uh, what about if I'm a first time registrant? Do I need an ID? Yeah. Okay, so you guys were good, but I tripped you up. So, the quick answer is that when you fill out your voter registration card, put an identification information there, you show your driver's license or social security number, but if the state screws up and isn't able to match you against their database, then they will ask you for identification at the polls. Now, quick question, what counts as identification in New York State? Uh, uh, let's, let's make sure everyone hears them. An electric bill, a telephone bill, um, I guess something from government that has your name and your address. Perfect. So if you're ever at a poll site and you see somebody asking for a uh, form of identification, uh, tell them they shouldn't be doing that. Uh, unless, of course, it says uh, on the voter roll that they're asking for it and then and only then there's usually a case where uh, it's because of their new registrant. Uh, if they don't have identification, can they still vote on yeah. the first time? Yeah. How, how do they do that? Provisional. Right, so we have a provisional ballot, they fill out the affidavit ballot, and uh, that's how they vote. So what's troubling is that some, some folks, even in this room, didn't know about that, and part of voting rights is getting that out to everybody. So just a, an idea of what's at stake. Uh, four states have strict photo identification. Five states have strict photo ID Pending, Pennsylvania is one of them. Seven states require photo identification. One state has it pending. Three states have strict identification. And 21 states are like New York with very simple uh, authentication for voting. Uh, now, there are 30 states with pending legislation on voter ID. And uh, would it shock you if I told you New York was one of them? Yeah. New York State has three bills, two in the Assembly, one in the Senate for voter ID. The Assembly sponsor is Katz, the Senate sponsor is Gallivan. It happens to be Republicans. Uh, given the way that our state is structured, we're hoping it will not pass. Last session, the voter ID law was actually uh, sponsored by a Democrat in the Assembly. So what's at stake is you need to keep your eternal vigilance because voter ID is the poll tax of our generation and we need your help to keep fighting it. I'm going to turn it over to Len who's going to tell you a little bit about our legislative agenda at Democratic Lawyers Council.